I'm Vicky and a very warm welcome to section 4A of your Marketing Principles Unit, where we will be learning how to plan marketing mixes for two different segments in consumer markets. You will have already seen the terminology marketing mix, so we'll know a little bit about this already. However, first you are really going to focus in on the consumer market and look at the different segments that exist within this market. After learning about the different segments that exist, we will then look at exactly how to establish and formulate a marketing mix for the predominant sections that we will be studying in this subsection. After you have done that, you'll move on to look at the organisational markets and how they differ from consumer markets and we will finish by looking at the different types of organisations that exist. Great. Well, let's now take a look at the terminology that you will be using. Firstly, you have already seen in Learning Outcome 3 that a marketing mix is essentially a tool used by marketers in business to consider all the aspects of their marketing strategy to ensure success in their chosen market. So then, what do we mean when we talk about a consumer or organisational market? Well, simply speaking, a consumer market is any market that products or services are brought by people for personal or family use. Whereas an organisational market is one where organisations purchase products to resell at a product to turn into something else or to use to keep their organisation running correctly. Right, well that's the terminology covered. Now let's think about what you are actually going to be learning. When you begin to look at the different types of consumer markets, we will learn that there are four main types. Fast-moving consumer goods, consumer durables, soft goods and services. You will focus on the first two of those sections in this learning objective and we will learn that fast-moving consumer goods are high volume, low value and frequently repurchase items such as bread or bin liners. Meanwhile, consumer durables are low volume, high value, infrequently repurchased items such as computers or tumble dryers. Next, you will learn how to put together a marketing mix for both of these sections. You will see that pricing and promotional strategies vary quite significantly between the two different markets and we will go into detail about what type of strategies suits each section. Once you have finished looking at consumer markets, you will move on to cover organisational markets. Here you will see that there are a number of differences between the two markets that exist, including that consumers buy for emotional reasons, whereas organisations purchase mainly for functionality and value. You will also learn that organisations purchase products in much larger quantities than consumers, and that for this reason, they receive a much more personal service when it comes to promotional techniques than consumers do. The final thing that you will look at is the different types of organisations. Here you will find out about resellers, industrial, non-profit and governmental organisations. Perfect. Now you know what you're going to learn, so just to summarise, what is it that you should be looking out for in this subsection? 1. The different types of segments within the consumer market. 2. How to formulate marketing mixes for some of those segments. 3. How the organisational market is different to the consumer market. 4. The different types of organisations. OK, well, that's all from me for now. Please watch this video as many times as you need before moving on to the core content section. See you soon. Hi there, my name is Jane and this is the core content for Marketing Principles Learning Outcome 4A. Now, the first thing that we're going to look at in this section is the different types of consumer markets that exist. To look at this, the first thing we'll need to know is what is a consumer market? Well, a consumer market is a market that is comprised of products that are bought by an individual to use either personally or for their family. Consumer markets can be categorised into four areas. 
fast-moving consumer goods, consumer durables, soft goods and services. However, in this section, we're going to focus on the first two, fast-moving consumer goods and consumer durables. So let's begin by looking at fast-moving consumer goods, which I'll refer to as FMCGs for short from now on. Products that fall into this category are high volume, low unit value and fast repurchase items. These items are called fast moving as they are manufactured and resold quickly. An example of this type of product will include most things you find in the grocery section of a supermarket. Items such as tin soup, bread and magazines are all products that would be classified as FMCG. They generally have a very short shelf life sometimes due to the fact that they could be highly perishable, bread being an example of this, but also because consumers buy them quickly. Now these items do tend to be sold at low margins, but in high volume with profits being accrued by the large volume that can be sold due to the short time that these products sit on the shelves and the high turnover rate of the product. The next category of consumer market is the consumer durable market. Products within this category are low volume, high value items. The terminology durable is generally applied to these items as they will sit on the shelves for a much longer period of time than FMCGs. Consumer durables can be broken down into two further categories, white goods and brown goods. White goods are large domestic appliances, usually a machine that accomplishes some domestic household task, for example, a fridge, a freezer or a washing machine. These items are durable items as they are so infrequently purchased by consumers. However, you can probably see that when these items are purchased, they're a much larger expense than FMCGs. Brown goods are similar to white goods in that they generally are used to accomplish a household task. However, they differ in that they are smaller and more portable domestic appliances. Examples include microwaves, kettles and toasters. But in the same way as with white goods, these items are infrequently purchased but carry a value and high margin for sellers of this item. Now the final two sections I'll only mention for completeness. These are soft goods, which are much like consumer durable items, except for the fact that they wear out and need replacing more frequently. Examples of these products would be shoes or clothes. And the final category is services, which will be dealt with in much more detail in a later learning objective. So that's all of the different types of consumer markets that we are going to talk about today. But now we're going to think about how we can formulate a marketing mix within those categories. You should remember from Learning Outcome 3 that a marketing mix is comprised of the four P's, product, price, promotion and place. Well, all of those things need to be considered for each of the market types that we have talked about. So, let's begin by focusing on the fast-moving consumer goods, the FMCG market. We have already talked a bit about this type of product in this type of market. They're fast moving, frequently repurchased and sometimes perishable. And these are all important considerations when formulating a marketing mix. So firstly, let's consider the price. Products in this segment lend themselves to one of two of the pricing strategies talked about in Learning Outcome 3, neutral or penetrative. A penetrative pricing policy is a higher risk strategy as profits will initially be much lower. However, the advantage is that low prices can grab the attention of consumers and get them to take a risk on the new product. And if they like it, then they may continue to purchase the items after the price has risen to normal values. Next, we need to consider promotion. FMCGs will usually be in a highly competitive marketplace, and as such, strong branding, good PR and advertising will usually be used to get consumers to ensure that they both recognise and trust the product so that they will select it over the competition. Prices and profits are generally too low for sales organisation to be utilised, but sales promotions such as competitions or rewards are frequently used. Finally, we need to think about place. FMCGs are frequently re-bought by consumers and as such, it's essential they are easily and quickly available. 
Supermarkets and other high street stores are good places, although internet stores with fast dispatch and short lead times are also frequently used for distribution in this type of market. So now we have talked about marketing mix for FMCGs. Let us now compare that to how consumer durables work. We know that products here are lower volume but higher price and are infrequently bought by consumers. The higher price of these items generally reflects the perceived value of the products to consumers and as such these items are generally desirable items. This can lead to the price skimming strategy being utilised to maximise profits and this is due to the technological benefits that newly released products in this market frequently have. For some durable items, particularly items that do not offer any real technical advantage over competitors, such as many brown goods like toasters or electric mixers, price skimming may be impossible and consequently a neutral pricing scheme is often more likely to be used. In terms of promotion, this can vary largely on the type of product. However, generally advertising and good PR are required to build the consumer's faith that the relatively large price they'll pay will result in good value and service from these items. Some high-end white or brown goods may also employ a sales representative on the shop floor that will engage with customers to try and convince them to make a purchase. And the larger margins on these items make this a viable option. So we have seen how the marketing mix for each of the two segments we wish to focus on can be formulated and have finished discussing consumer markets for the time being. We're now going to move on from this and talk about organisational markets, which differ quite substantially from the consumer markets that we have been seeing so far. Organisational markets comprise of all the individuals and companies that purchase goods for uses other than personal consumption. Organisational and consumer markets are fundamentally different in a number of ways. Firstly, consumers purchase items for personal consumption. Whereas an organisation will purchase products either to resell them at a profit, turn them into something else that they can resell, or to maintain the workplace. Another key difference is the quantities in which products in the organisational marketplace are sold. In the organisation market, businesses have far fewer customers than in consumer markets. However, their customers buy in much greater quantities. Organisational customers and consumers also vary in the way that the buying process is conducted. Consumers generally make decisions about purchases based upon their personalities, lifestyle and motivations. Whereas organisations make purchases based on a number of criteria including company procedure, required functionality and generally are unaffected by personal whims or desires. Other variations include the type of marketing methods used to attract customers in an organisational market. Due to the high volume of products involved, long-term relationships between seller and buyer are generally sought after. Organisations prefer to have a face-to-face -face relationship with their supplier and cost-effectiveness will generally be the main driver when selecting a supplier of goods. Consumers, on the other hand, do not require these long-term relationships and can be governed by mood, emotion or convenience when purchasing products. So, now we know the differences between consumer and organisational markets. As part of that discussion, we talked about how organisations generally seek long-term relationships with suppliers. It's easy to see why this is beneficial to the seller, as they'll get high quantity orders on a regular basis. However, what does a buyer seek from this long-term arrangement? The answer generally is to ensure a reliable and high standard of service, which is a fundamental part of the way that companies that sell products in the organisational market set themselves apart from their competitors. They try to add value to their offering through service. What this means is that companies selling their products in an organisational market will try to increase the value of their product to their customers by offering them more than just low prices and high quality products. So often to increase the value of their offering, they'll also seek to market themselves as offering a service to their customers that's viewed as valuable. 
Examples include promising short delivery times on all orders or ensuring that the customer has a personal account manager that will look after all of their problems and all their queries in an efficient manner. More often than not, in this market, an excellent service offering can be just as important as competitive pricing. So we have now discussed the organisation market and also how important good service can be in this marketplace. We've also mentioned that many of the organisations within this market are businesses buying from other businesses. However, these are not the only types of organisations, so we'll now briefly go through the different types of organisations that you need to know about. The first type of organisation that we need to know about are resellers. Resellers are companies that do not make products themselves, but instead buy them ready-made in large quantities and then sell them on either to other organisations or other consumers in smaller quantities at a profit. An example of a reseller would be a company like PC World, who do not manufacture products that they sell themselves, rather they buy them directly from the manufacturer but they buy them in large volumes and then resell them either online or in one of their retail outlets. The second type of organisation to consider is industrial organisations. These companies generally manufacture a product and then look to sell them onto a reseller in large quantities, making a profit on the cost they incurred in making the products. Famous manufacturers include phone companies such as HTC or Nokia, who manufacture phone handsets and they'll sell them on in bulk to companies like Carphone Warehouse, who in turn sell them on to the consumers. The next type of organisation you need to know about is the non-profit organisation. A non-profit organisation operates in a similar way to other businesses. However, it's fundamentally different in that profits are retained by the company to allow it to achieve the goals that it has set out in its manifesto. Many MPOs may also be registered charities and it utilises any surplus revenue to carry out its charitable goals. Now a common mistake is the belief that MPOs do not intend to make a profit. In actuality, it's quite the opposite. They seek to make a profit. The difference, however, is that the company retains all returns for use and no dividends are paid. An example of a non-profit organisation is the UK-based charity Oxfam. Oxfam have retail establishments all over the country selling a combination of donated items and items they've purchased to resell. However, all profits from sales are invested in administrative aid to places in the world that need it. The final type of organisation that we will discuss and to be aware of is government organisation, often known as an agency. This type of organisation will generally be part of the mechanics of government and will be responsible for specific functions within the overall governmental body. These agencies may well buy products or services from other organisations and may well generate revenue by providing services or products to consumers in the same way as other organisations we've discussed. Similar to a non-profit organisation, all surplus revenues are reinvested back into government to be spent on achieving their goals. An example of this may be the UK Trade and Investment Body of Government, who provide training and seminars to businesses interested in exporting their products abroad for a fee. All profits from this are subsequently reinvested to try and increase the amount of companies that successfully export products abroad. OK, great. We've now finished talking through all the content required for this learning objective, so let's now summarise what it is we've learnt. The learning objective that we were studying in this subsection was to plan marketing mixes for two different segments of the consumer market. So, what we started by doing was looking at the different types of consumer markets that exist, and then we classified these as fast-moving consumer goods, consumer durables, soft goods and services. We then, however, focused on the first two segments, FMCGs and consumer durables. And we learned that FMCGs were high volume, low value, short shelf life items that are repurchased by consumers frequently. Whilst consumer durables are high value items that are purchased in much lower frequencies and much less frequently repurchased. After we learned what each section was, we then looked at how we could formulate a marketing mix for each of these two sections. 
comparing the differences between each of the four sections of the marketing mix, meaning that we had covered a large part of the subsection's learning objective. And next, we looked at organisational markets and how these compared with consumer markets and highlighted a number of fundamental differences, including the reasons that organisations buy products compared with why consumers purchase goods and services. And we also found out that organisations buy in much larger quantities and that sellers in the organisational market will promote their goods in a very different manner than in a consumer market. And finally, we took a look back at the different types of organisations that exist and learnt about resellers, industrial, non-profit and governmental organisations. Well, that about wraps it up, so thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon.